Don't you just love doing paperwork? Look at all this mess. There's a year and a half's worth of work here. Probably closer to two years. And this is just the paperwork I've kept. Never mind the stuff I've had to throw out. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we're going to take some time and talk about everybody's favorite topic, and that's paperwork. Oh, joy. But it's a necessary evil. Right here, I've got 14 pieces of graph paper. And this is the extra long graph paper. All taped together. And from where my thumb is, all the way to... Come on, fold over. Back down here where my right hand is, there's my entire truck. I've literally laid out the entire truck on a scale of a quarter inch to an inch. This hump here on my paperwork represents my shower. My shower is 32 by 32. I have a 30 I have a 36 inch by 36 inch by 10 inch storage like my roof area. Being only five foot seven, if I make my roof at six feet, and I may even make it a little, I may make it five foot eleven. I've got all this area over my shower, I'm going to use that as storage. I'm only running a gray tank because that's all I really need. Now, I'm running a porta potty. And my porta potty is going to sit in my shower out of the way. My gray tank is 20 gallons, and that'll connect my sink and my shower together. And my gray tank will mount directly under the, under the floor. Unfortunately, it's got to go under the floor under the sink. I would much prefer having my gray water tank um, at the rear of the vehicle, but I can't get the plumbing to work. Directly under my sink area, I will have my Snowmaster. It's not going to be riding in the truck like it would have if it was in the Hilux when I made that vehicle. That vi uh, video was designed with a Hilux in mind. The Dodge that I'm trying to buy on auction, or I will get on auction, um, is the third vehicle in the process of getting stuff built. Now I'm looking at a 3500 to a 5500 Dodge for the simple reason of the fact that if you buy a truck that's a 35 to a 55, those vehicles are designed to handle an awful lot of weight. If you buy a 2500 or a 1500 uh, series North American pickup truck, don't be surprised if you have to add in extra springs and you have to do a lot of extra suspension work because you're pushing the GVWR of your truck kind of to the limits. I worked out the weight of the aluminum that I'm going to be using to build my camper and I'm coming in at about 2,700 pounds. That does not include the formula insulation. I haven't got a, a weight on that, but it's probably somewhere around 25 pounds a sheet. And I've got around 10 sheets of that going in there. It does also does not include fuel and it does not include water. It does not include all the junk I carry. It's just straight aluminum and, uh, and the formula. So I'm looking at about 2,700, 2,800 pounds bone dry empty. One, let's just say that's one of the reasons for the bigger truck. I want to go global. 
And to go global, you've got two ways you can do things. You can go what they call rollo, which is roll on, roll off at a port. So what you basically do is you surrender your vehicle to the port authorities and somebody drives it onto a, a cargo ship. It gets to the port at another end, somebody drives it off, and once it goes through all the clearances, you get it back. I do not want to do that because roll on, roll off means your vehicle is more susceptible to theft because people have access to your vehicles like they've got the keys. They have to be able to move the vehicle so they, you know, anything you leave behind and you're not supposed to leave anything behind, um, it's going to cause a problem. I have to be able to fit into a standard 40 foot shipping container. My camper, outside to outside, is 84 inches because the door is 91. Most commercial made campers are wider than that. Now four wheel campers in the US do make a pop up four wheel camper. Their campers will fit in the shipping container, Grizzly and Bear. That's how they got from Japan to um, Australia was in a ship, or pardon me, Taiwan to Australia was in a shipping container. Roll on, roll off work is if you can go with the vehicle, but if you, like when Grizzly and Bear went from Japan to Taiwan, they actually re rode the ferry with the vehicle. They drove it on and they drove it off themselves. But if you have to give up your, your rig, I don't particularly like the idea of doing that. That's why I'm going into a shipping container. Other considerations that I have to work on is ventilation. There's a company that make a product that they call Fantastic Fan and a lot of people use these. From what I'm seeing and I'm hearing, everybody loves them. They work fairly well. If you turn the switch one way, you can draw air in from the outside. If you turn a switch the other way, you can reverse the motor and send air out. I am not using a fantastic fan because of my solar panels. My entire roof of my camper is covered in solar panels and any fan that has a pop-up lid like this, if I want to use that fan, I lose that space for a solar panel. My ventilation fans fit flush. They're four RVs and they fit flush. I have seven of those. One goes in the bathroom, two go at the back by my, by my sink, two go over my bed, and I may put two down low so I can suck air in down low and then blow it up out high. Because what I have not got and I probably regret not having, is an AC unit. And I say that because Priya is laying on the floor over here and she's having a nice sleep. The air conditioning is running, as you can probably tell by the hydro bill floating in the corner over my shoulders. I can tell how Priya is doing by the way she pants and where she is on the floor. And when she's uncomfortable, she pants like a freight train or she starts moving all over the floor because she's looking for some place to stay cool. I may regret not having a 12 volt system for air conditioning and I may have to put one into the camper. That's not on the plans though. That's between a year and a half and two years with the paperwork and this only, rec only represents what I've kept. And today's plan is to get all this in order because some of it is and some of it isn't. I went through my notes earlier today, not including the truck, the aluminum, the welder, the modifications to the truck, which means a bull bar and two different winches. Tires, new shocks. I'm looking at around $8,000 
plus all of that just to get going. I figure it's going to take about three months to get the welding done on the truck. And then we're going to give it about six, seven months as a damn good shakeout. And I'd really like to run up into the Arctic in the winter. Uh, not because I'm totally crazy, but I need, this, I need to make sure that that truck can handle the cold weather that I'm trying to design the truck to handle. My heating systems have to work, and they have to work perfectly. And if they don't, I want to get stuff done where I'm in an area where I can make repairs rather than be way out in the middle of nowhere and have everything break down which is usually where everything breaks down anyway so with that one thing I'd like to pass on before I close out today is a trick I saw a few school bus conversion and van lifers doing and what they're doing is they're cabinets are toolboxes that a mechanic would use like the seven I have downstairs instead of building shelves out of wood they're using a mechanics toolbox the reason for that is the drawers are designed to hold a lot of weight and when they're all closed you put the key in and turn the key they're all lockable and the drawers don't roll out when you're driving so if you're planning a build, if you've got a camper that, well, you know, geez, I think we should upgrade it. Before you start putting cabinetry in, start looking at stuff like a mechanic's toolbox. Now you may think, well, okay, great, that's fine for the lowers, but what do I do for uppers? Well, your uppers, some of them like one of the boxes that I'm taking with me the lid folds up so if the lid folds up against your roof you're going to lose the area up on top where most mechanics would put their, uh, their sockets but you're going to have six to nine drawers that you can slide open so you could put things like placemats plates cutlery uh, serving de details things that are small you could put in there and if you had two or three of those if you took out some of those drawers and just left the, the larger bottom one in the bottom you might put three toolboxes together take out all the middle drawers and now you've got a stand-up drawer that's about 16 inches high 18 inches high that you can put bottles and cans in and when you close that lid down and turn the latch it's locked so nothing's gonna slide out when you roll around Something to think of, guys. Give credit where credit is due. And some of the YouTubers I've been watching have been doing that. And it's a really, really good idea. It's cheaper in the long run. Think about it. And with that, we'll catch you in the next one. God bless you. Bye-bye.